Well, howdy, 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 nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls, and welcome to this. Let me move my mouse over the uh, taskbar and let me move my hamster <laughs> into view. <laughs> Got little bad ears, McGee. He's bad ears, McGee. And I don't know why he's so patchy with his fur on his face right there, but he's not usually so patchy. But still, he's a good little guy. Bad ears, McGee. Actually, Patches Jr. <laughs> Oh, my apologies, my throat. Got a sore throat this morning. Anyway, it is 6.45 a.m. It is Tuesday, the 4th of July. Yes, the 4th of July. Happy holidays, everybody in the United States of America. You know, today is blow your fingers off with explosives day. Thumbs up on that. Where we celebrate our independence by hurting ourselves badly and overwhelming our hospitals with all of our new partial finger amputees <laughs> thumbs up oh have you ever seen the x-rays of an exploded hand not pretty now i'm gonna put little bad ears back so he can go back to sleep good little guy thank you he's a jumper he likes to they've got the wheels as you can see back here so there's the platforms next to the wheels what little patches junior likes to do is he gets up on his platform and then jumps and then he hits the wheel running and it's really cute and amazing he's just a really cute little guy it's awesome thumbs up for that oh today i'm wearing my uh, zombie marilyn monroe t-shirt again so thumbs up on that, just thought I'd show that. <laughs> I didn't want to stand up, sorry. I'm centered, so if I, oh, well, I was, you know, now that I've moved the camera, but I was cent centered until I did that. Actually, I did a pretty good job of putting it right back where it was supposed to be, so thumbs up. But yeah, so boy, I can't remember what I was going to say and that because I just did that. Huh. Oh, well, it's a brand new day. It's, like I said, blow your fingers off day. So uh, I hope everyone's going to have a really, really good day today. You know, notwithstanding the fact that it's a holiday in the United States, whether or not that's true, it's just I'm really hoping that everybody has a good day. I have my little subject uh, page here. Oh, gosh, I can't believe I said uh, my sincere apologies. One of the best, and I'm my sincere apologies for my sore throat too. One of the best possible things you can do with public speaking, and public speaking as in just talking with friends or talking to a small group of people or a large group of people, if you want to make yourself look better, smarter, anything like that, don't say um or ah. Uh. Instead of talking and saying ah, uh, just pause. Wait, then talk. So don't go, and uh, I was thinking, just go, and I was thinking, and boy, you look a thousand percent better. You sound a thousand percent better too. So the times that I do, um, and uh, my sincere apologies. I know better. I've trained myself better throughout my life, but for whatever reason, I actually glommed onto that as a partial habit for a while. Oh, it was horrible. Now I'm still trying to get rid of it. I was one. <coughs> oh, my sore throat. My sincere apologies. I almost lost it right there. I was reading something this morning about grief, and it reminded me of the situation with my wife and myself. Because grief, anything bad happening to people, if something bad happens to you, because I, I read an article in Cracked, you see, this fellow, big, strapping, six, six foot four fellow, good fighting shape. In fact, he was, he was a boxer and he found out when he fell and landed on his sofa and his lung collapsed and he almost died, uh, that he discovered that you lose most people that know you. He had a lot of what he considered very, very close friends. Nobody came to visit, nobody called, nobody texted him, nobody left him any social media messages, nothing. His friends were gone. Anytime, anytime anything bad happens to you, you're going to experience the huge shakeup 
in everybody you know. Big, life-threatening things like that terrify other people. And even though they may not understand that it's fear that's making them stay away, it's largely fear. Your situation reminds them so much of their own mortality, they can't go near you anymore. You may, when grief rearranges your, your uh, address book, was the way the, the phrase went. And it's true. And most of the time when people get sick, you lose everybody. And that includes family. It's really horrifying as well because people that you count on for your support network going, oh yeah, I've got these people that are that will help. When something actually happens, you'll discover that 99% of what you were counting on as your support network is not there. And it's not malicious, it's just mostly fear. But also, it tears relationships apart. Marriages, same thing happens. One spouse gets sick, the other cannot handle the reminder right there of their own impending mortality. And boom, marriage is gone. Relationships gone. Just boom, the person that you thought you could count on the most bolts leaving you even more shattered to try and deal with the issue that you've got. Oh, it's terrible. I'm lucky. And actually, I'm not the lucky one. My, my wife was the lucky one. When she got really, really sick, two years into our marriage, I mean, she had to have her, you know, her chest cracked open so that they could operate on her heart to replace her failing heart valves. And if they hadn't operated her on her that day, she would have been in the hospital dying and dead the next day. She was that close to absolute heart failure. That destroys marriages, but it just, took us from a normal marriage orbit and we just went and we got just really close and the sicker she got the tighter our orbits became I loved her so much there was no way I could have abandoned her in any way shape or form and I don't say that to try and make myself sound like ooh I'm a saint it's like no no I'm just happened to be for her, the lucky kind of guy that it didn't terrify me. It just made me love her all the more, knowing that I was. <sighs> My apologies. Uh, it just made me love her all the more, knowing that I was going to lose her sooner than was fair. And so up until the day she died, her orbit just got tighter and tighter and tighter. So thumbs up on that. Uh, not where I wanted to end this, but I'm not able to really go on, the, on this one for a little while. <clears throat> Every time I think I'm you know, developing a lot of a, a, you know, a thick enough armor and can talk about various things without crying. Every time I think I'm, I'm you know, doing pretty good, I find out just how, how raw the wounds still are, so. But that also tied in because of what I was reading about in the article, my hands are killing me by the by. Not so bad that I can't use them, but holy smokes, they feel smashed like with hammers. All I've got is a uh, bud and not much left, so uh, <laughs> I hurt. When I've got uh, cannabis oil dabs, then I do real good. And that total pain control for hours with just bud, it, I can use them. But it's, um, 
Oh boy, I did. Good job of losing my own train of thought. Good job. Well, what I wanted to also say, oh yeah, the guy, he was talking about near-death experiences. Just real quick, I wanted to rattle off a couple of my own near-death experiences. Where the first one was back when I was in the Air Force. I uh, was sick one day on top of being drunk and I didn't feel good and I didn't want to feel bad. And so I took aspirin and drunk enough forgot how much aspirin I was taking had no idea thought I was doing fine woke up the next day with my ears going Bang! puking blood so ended up in the hospital in, in you know in the air force where they don't play games with this sort of stuff and discovered that yeah it was an aspirin overdose lucky I was real lucky burned off my stomach lining and all that but they gave me stuff and I I'm okay so that's good you know, it wasn't a suicide attempt, so everything was fine that way. But then also, when I was first going on to methadone, I took uh, 12 milligrams of methadone over a 48-hour period. And it killed me. I stopped breathing. My wife was desperately trying to keep me alive while she, after she called 911. You know, my, the EMTs told her that if the, my kids had discovered me, you know, because I was tired. I went to take a nap, went to bed, stopped breathing. One of my kids came down and said, tried to wake me up, came up, told mommy, hey, daddy's not breathing. If it had been five minutes longer, I wouldn't be here now. You know, and then they gave me Narcan at the hospital. And what I felt coming back was weird because I was gone. But then I remembered hearing carnival sounds and carnival noises and you know waking up to carnival sounds and then the more I listened the more it got less carnival noises until I realized that some people were talking to me and I started answering questions they asked me if they could roll if I could roll and I grabbed hold of things and rolled for them and then the more I woke up and came back to life, it was like, I'm in the hospital. What is going on here? And let me tell you, a near-death experience like that, where, I mean, it's, yeah, near-death in that I should have been dead, but I was dragged back, kicking and screaming through death's door. I mean, I was on the other side, got pulled back, and it it is a fundamental change in viewpoint when that happens. When you realize that the world's still here, everything's going on, you're still here, but you shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. You should be gone. You should be dead. You should not be alive. And the world is just a massively different place at that time. It took over a week and a half in memory before the feeling of I, I shouldn't even be here wore off. I sat down to talk to my wife about that and I said, do you get this feeling? Because I saved her life a good 25 times just on my own. Where if I had delayed even on my own just 30 seconds between realizing there was an issue and making the right decision fast. If I hadn't done it right there, she would have died at least 25 times. I saved her life right there. And I, she said, yeah, that's the feeling you get. And I need to uh, do my, I'm at 14 minutes. I need to, I'm gonna thank 20 to 25 people for having left me comments. And I appreciate that. So uh, the fact that you've left me a comment. So I wanna thank you for leaving me a comment. If you'd like a shout out, you know, a thank, a thank you of sorts, <laughs> just ask for it. And if I catch it, you'll get it. Yeah, Jordan Kelly's asking for a shout out and that is a very good thing. You know, so howdy howdy. Uh, Jordan Kelly, thumbs up, and if, if I mispronounce your name, my sincere apologies, but also uh, Devondre Hughes, thank you very, very much, Firetruck904, thank you, uh, Louis Mariscal, thank you very, very much, and Lex underscore Mex underscore 17, thank you very, very much, Gamer Nation.
contribution, greatly appreciated. And Murderotica, ooh, that's a good one. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Rodrigo Vasquez, thank you, greatly appreciated. Uh, James, uh, J-A-Y-M-Z Keen, thank you very, very much. Uh, Father Paco, greatly appreciated. And uh, Dylan, Dylan O'Neill, 2011, there we go. Thank you very, very much. And Caleb Arvin, thank you, greatly appreciated. Pineapple Toast, <laughs> thank you, cool name, greatly appreciated. Uh, Maiko, 134, thank you. And uh, Gurumagan, thank you very, very much. King Tiger, 213, thank you. Reese Emberly, greatly appreciated, thank you very, very much. Dan AEA, not quite sure how you pronounce that, but thank you very, very much. Joe Clough, C L O U G H, thank you, greatly appreciated. Uh, Akame Bro, thank you, greatly appreciated. Uh, e N T Z, E N T Z, Z, thank you very, very much. Uh, Claude5190, thank you. And then there is Tobias W, thank you very, very much. Mika Mach 5, thank you very, very much, greatly appreciated. And Angel, son of a gun, Thank you very much. And then Cameron Harrington. Thank you very, very much. That is 25 people. Greatly appreciate it. The fact that you left me a comment is what I'm thanking you for. Good comment, bad comment, indifferent comment. They're all the same in my eyes. Thank you for having left me a comment. Greatly appreciate it. I'm in 16 minutes and change. Where does the time go? I need to hurry up and do my greetings. I like to give greetings to people in their home languages. So if you would like to hear a greeting in your home language that you don't hear me say already, you know, just pop it into the comments. Let me know. Bom dia, dia deed, dia guet, guten tag, ahanyo aseo, buenos dias, buna de banato, ohio, labrit, labas ritas, kamusta, bonjourno, terra homocost, yora gelt, barra baive, bari luz, nihao, kalimera, bonjour, bokertov, jean dobri, lab dien, dobre utra, mesa ol heli, dobre ramo, bereda. Priviet, Merhaba, and go forth and have the crack. Good food, good drink, with good friends. Doesn't have to be an alcoholic beverage, doesn't have to be crack cocaine, doesn't have to be a prostitute spreading her thighs for you. No, the crack. Good food, good drink, with good friends. It can include, you know, uh, you know, drugs, drink, and whores, but it doesn't have to. Well, thumbs up on that. No, 17 minutes and 28 cents. Cents. <laughs> I made that totally into a money uh, situation there. I meant to say and change. How about that? I'm going to quickly say the things that I, I, I do as my one and only actual thing for a format and template. But if you could uh, check out my links down below, click show more. They open right up. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's merch. If you wanted to take a look at stuff, you know, thumbs up. And there's like Twitter, Facebook, uh Google Plus, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, and my blog. Ah, links all the way down there. Thank you so very, very much to everybody who's donated to my GoFundMe campaign to help continue to keep me alive. Thank you so very much. I know I keep asking. Thank you so very, very much for having saved me. Uh, so thumbs up. And my thanks to every single one of my uh, Patreon.com patrons. You are all beautiful, wonderful, awesome people. Thank you so very, very much. I wouldn't be able to live here in this house uh, for as long as I have if it hadn't been for all of your help. Thumbs up for that, and thank you so very, very much. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now, of course, you don't have to check out the links, and if you don't want to donate, you can't donate, that's okay. I take all good wishes and deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. Thumbs up on that. If you could toss me a like, that would be awesome. I have a streak of self-loathing a mile wide, and my self-esteem is so low an ant could walk over the top of it and not brush its belly on my self-esteem's head. It's a thousand percent better than it was, getting better all the time, but I do appreciate likes. If you could subscribe to the channel, that would be cool, but only if you're down with it, of course. If you don't like my videos, please don't watch them. If you don't want to subscribe, please do not. But if you are down for it and you want to subscribe and you like doing that, then thumbs up. I hope to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. A very good thing. Plus, we slap a few coats of sealant on you, stack you like cordwood down in the basement. You're going to last for decades before you go bad. Thumbs up on that. Hey, even in hard economic times, a guy has to eat. Hey, cannibalism for the win. Oh man, I've only got 15 seconds left. 
So hey, you have a very, very good day today. I've got a reaction video coming up. I've got a game video coming up. I'm hoping to stream tonight. Here's a hope and hoping. So you take care. Have a great day today. I'll see you on the flip side. And that's a very good thing.